Pinch peel grind tungsten carbide shafts. Holding that corner radius on the roughing wheel is difficult, so we use a rock hard, high concentration diamond wheel. But there's disagreement on whether we should take several small fast passes or one large slow pass. When cylindrical traverse grinding, I like taking small depths of cut with a faster traverse speed. But when I do that in pinch peel, it seems that the corner breaks down. Why? And how should I adjust my parameters to hold this corner better? Pinch peel grinding is a uh, kind of a funky type of grinding. When you do regular cylindrical grinding, let's say cylindrical traverse, your wheel's like this, this guy's rotating, we cruise across. In pinch peel, kind of like in the figure here, we have a finishing wheel down below, but we have the roughing wheel, and we angle them way over this way. And then we come across the wheel, this the part this way, while the part is rotating real fast. Now this is very different from typical cylindrical grinding. In typical cylindrical grinding, all the action's going on right here on the bottom of the wheel. In pinch peel, because we rotate this guy, well, he's going on the bottom of the wheel again, but it's all happening right here in front. So you can see in the figure, all that action is occurring on the front of the wheel where I've drawn that circle. Now. If you're a little guy on the wheel, let's say you're that little guy right on the corner right there. Okay, now you don't really care what's going on above you. The grits above you may be taking a beating, they may not, but you only care what's happening to you. So if you're a selfish grit and you want your life to be easier, well, you want to share the workload. So given a choice between taking many shallow fast cuts or taking one deep slow cut, you want to take one deep slow cut so that you're not getting as much of a beating and your buddies over here, your neighbors, are actually helping out in the cause. Number two, you want to be going at a slower feed rate, slower traverse speed, because that's just going to beat on you a little less. Number three, you actually want to slow down your workpiece RPM. Okay, and the reasons for this are a little more complicated but that'll also lower the forces on each individual grit. Okay. So, to summarize, if you want to hold form better, number one, speed up that wheel. As everyone knows, a faster wheel acts harder and is going to give us less wear on the corner. Number two, don't take lots of small little cuts, fast ones, take one deep slow cut. Okay. Number three, slow down your workpiece RPM, and that'll reduce the forces right there. What's the drawback of all this? Well, the drawback is you're going to generate more heat, and temperatures are going to be higher. Just got to live with that. Uh, if you can live with that, great. If you can't, well, you can't. But in terms of that little corner radius, all those things there are going to give you a better form holding on your radius. With the exception there is, well, if things get so hot right here in the grinding zone, well, if it's a resin wheel, you're softening your resin, and if it's a metal bonded wheel, it's a little different. But if things get so hot, you will start to graphitize your diamond in that respect too, so that's not good. So if things get too hot, you can get uh, rapid wheel wear just from high temperatures. But in general, faster wheel speed, slower traverse speed, bigger cut, slower cut, and a slower workpiece RPM will all give you better form holding, but more heat.